How can we add some life to our enemies? Do we really need the most advanced enemy AI in order to make our enemies interesting? We did some <clears throat> research and found out that most of the enemies in the games we play are surprisingly simple. Currently our enemies are nothing more than just a simple punching bag and that needs to change. So the first step to add life to our enemies is to be able to take it from them. So let's create a script for damageable things and also add a collider to the enemy. And whenever the enemy's health reaches zero, it dies. But only making the enemy disappear when it's dying feels kind of lame. So let's add some death animations. Hmm, that might work for some games, but for our games we have something completely different in mind. Let's see how it feels when the enemy explodes in a bunch of chunks. So let's add some particles, GPU particles, 2D to be specific. Ah, yes, that feels great. But these particles should also now collide with the environment. So let's set the collision to rigid. Um, let's set the collision to rigid. Two hours later. Okay, it turns out Godot particles can only collide with a light occlusion 2D object because particles behave like light in Godot. And that's why you should use the observer pattern. <laughs> Luckily, game development in Godot does not have to be as complicated as quantum physics always, which brings us to today's sponsor of this video, Zenva. Zenva offers easy to follow courses that are perfect for both beginners and intermediate level developers. What's awesome about Zenva is how they make learning fun and practical. So you get professional video tutorials, written lessons and interactive quizzes. Also you will work with real projects, building games in different genres like open world, RPGs and FPS. But Zenva isn't just about Godot, they also have courses on Python, Unity, Unreal and other tools. With one subscription, including a 7 day free trial, you will unlock over 250 courses and 32 learning pathways. And here is a special deal. Use the link in the description to get an extra 20% off the first year of your annual Zenva subscription on top of any existing site discounts. That's a significant saving for a world full of game development knowledge. This special offer is only valid for the first 50 subscribers, so be sure to be one of them. So if you want to improve your Godot skills or explore other game development areas, Zenva is the place to be. Grab this offer and start your game development journey now. Thanks again for Zenva for sponsoring this video. Now that we know how particles behave in Godot, let's also add some every time we hit the enemy to give a little more feedback. While already added, let's also change the enemy's appearance to fit more in the narrative of this game. Or if we want to be lazy, we can also use the player model as the final boss in a slightly darker color theme and call it the evil twin. But who would do something lazy like that? Not us, not us. But let's see. Okay, so the next point is, our enemies need to be able to attack, obviously. If you're a subscriber, you already know that we implemented an attack system as well as an animation system in our previous videos. And if you're not subscribed yet, do it. Using these systems, we can code behaviors without taking care of movement or animations because this part is already handled. What is only missing is that instead of a player controller, we set up an enemy controller that has a bunch of sensors and a bunch of inputs that we can control and use from external scripts. So let's create some methods to allow the enemy to move to a specific point or to attack something. To demonstrate that, let's just now create a script that only calls the attack system and one that lets the enemy move in one direction. Or, well, better move from left to right. Okay, so now that this works, let's create a finite state machine that uses the strategy pattern to switch which behavior to use depending on the current state. There are already so many great videos about finite state machines in Godot to show you how it can be implemented on YouTube, but the basic idea is that you are able to switch out behaviors based on an event or a trigger to move from one state to another, similar to the animation nodes you can see visually. The beauty of this is that we will later be able to switch out individual behaviors and can use more advanced enemy AI if necessary. And I give you one second to look at the code right now. 
For the beginning though, we will keep it simple and we will now create some simple behaviors like walking from left to right for the idle state and following the player whenever the player is near. Well, okay, but also let's keep some distance to the player. To do that, let's fire a raycast to check if the player is in sight and also see how far the player is away. We split that up into three segments, player is near, player is in attack range and player is too close. Okay, awesome. Now let's attack whenever the player is near. Meaning let's use our finite state machine to switch from following to attacking. Ooh, that feels unexpected. Let's also add some anticipation before the attack. This way the player gets a little time to realize that he is getting attacked. And just to test it out, let's see how it feels like if the enemy runs away after each attack. Hmm, I'm not sure about that, but let's keep it. Great, now that is a basic enemy type. We can also use exactly this behavior for our ranged enemy. Remember, we have this attack system implemented that lets us choose what type of attack is being used by the enemy. Quite awesome. So let's place these enemies in some of our level segments. So let's see how it feels like when the player can actually encounter some enemies. Okay, 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 let's fix the camera first so nobody gets sick anymore when watching our videos. Okay, much better, I agree. We will explain how we did that in the next video. And as you can also see, enemies will now engage into deadly combat with us. Now we can also add some animated obstacles, because in theory, those are just immovable enemies. And before we get bombarded again in the comment section, keep in mind everything is work in progress and probably most of the things will change in the final result. But we're always happy to hear some feedback to force us to improve something you see. Looking at the final result though, our levels now feel way more alive, the enemies engage with us, step by step we are getting in the right direction. But that's it for today, thank you for watching, if you like our work and want to support us, like and subscribe, bye.